Well, when I went in, uh, in 42, I went to Fort Oglethorpe, Georgia. That's where all the military went to get their assignments. And from there, I went to uh, Fort Sill, Oklahoma. That's artillery. In fact, I spent all my 20 years in artillery all the way through. Uh, I stayed after my basic training, which was about, I think, 11 weeks. Uh, then after the uh, 11 weeks, people were all shipped out to different areas. And they helped me to uh, replace an artillery chief and an artillery mechanic, which was being transferred. And I stayed there training uh, recruits on artillery and artillery and all basic military subjects for about uh, 41, 42, 43, about three years. Uh, and I finally got orders for uh, Fort Bragg, North Carolina. And there we formed a, a 240 millimeter uh, artillery unit. That's a humongous artillery piece. Uh, we trained there for a year and then went to uh, Europe, uh, joined uh, General Patton's Third Army. And I was there, uh, of course, they, we got there kind of the tail end of, uh, of World War II. Cause, and at that time, they had more artillery there than, you know, than they really needed. So we never did break our guns down, you know, we never did take the cosmoline out of the tubes to prepare them for firing. In fact, never did see them anymore. They took them to some compound, and I guess they may still be there rusting away. I don't know. Uh, and I stayed there until uh, I had enough points to uh, to come home. And they shipped us then to uh, uh, an, an area of uh, uh, Lahore, France, I believe was the area. Uh, there it was people had uh, a short time before they went home. So I had nothing to do. So I asked the um, captain in charge, I said, how about give me something to do? I'm, uh, this is doing nothing is running me up the wall. So he gave me a job driving a truck. And I drove a truck for uh, about f four months, I guess, hauling troops into Paris and uh, Brussels, Belgium on Liberty. You know, it, get them out of there uh, before they all went crazy, I guess. Uh, give them a little liberty in these different places. And then I finally got uh, enough points to come home uh, to, for discharge. My wife was uh, had gone to uh, Kansas City to business college. She uh, had, had a, a job working for a stationary plant company or something. So that's where old Watashi ended up was in Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, of course, I was, no, I, I was discharged in uh, uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. St. Louis, Jefferson Barracks, that's near St. Louis. And then uh, we shipped on to, uh, or got a bus and went on to Kansas City where my wife was. And I went to work for General Motors as a welder. And uh, a little, a little bit after that, just a short time after that, they formed a Marine Reserve unit there, an artillery unit, and I joined them. And then in 51, during the Korean War, uh, the unit was called to, to active duty. And uh, I uh, stayed with them then and finished my 20 years out. In the meantime, I went to... Uh, uh, Key West, Florida, uh, as a as a guard, I had a guard detachment in Key West, Florida. That was a big submarine base there. We had uh, sentries all around. Uh, then I got orders for. Uh, I was there for just a short time. My dad passed away, so uh, I had orders at that particular time, though, before he passed away, uh, for Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. That's where I spent a lot of my time in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Uh, there we formed a 155 artillery unit. Uh, and I was there for, oh, 
I don't remember exactly how long I was there. I went in 58, though, we went to, uh, uh, I had a, an 8-inch platoon, that's the heavy artillery. We uh, uh, got orders for uh, uh, the MED, they call it the MED. They keep a, a battalion of infantry, artillery units, tanks, infantry, uh, communicators, everything, just floating around in the MED, you know, just in case something happens for six months. So we were there for uh, six months, got back to uh, Gibraltar, getting ready to exchange. Uh, we had the atomic round at that particular time, uh, getting ready to exchange with the group that was relieving us. I heard the old anchor chain coming up. I got a hold of one of the Navy chiefs and said, man, what's going on here? I thought, we were, well, are we on our way home already? He said, no, man, he was he was teed off too, cause, uh, or kind of upset. Said some guy and one of the leaders in one of the little countries around somewhere had been assassinated, so we're going to have to go back out and cruise around a little bit more. So we pulled out and went back out in the med for another uh, six months, three months, just cruising around. Uh, in the meantime, I got orders for uh, Hawaii. Oh, I wrote to wife and says, well, Man, we may eventually get to Hawaii, but old dumb me, I knew they wasn't going to fly me out of there uh, to Hawaii. No way it's going to happen. So those orders were canceled. So I stayed there for the other three months, and then was back uh, back to Gibraltar, and then aboard ship, and back to Camp Lejeune. I was at Camp Lejeune for uh, three or four months, something like that, and. Me and one of the other first sergeants went to Washington, D.C. and talked to our monitor, you know, who places you and you and me at different places. And uh, so he sent me to uh, Fort Worth, Texas as a, as a reserve unit there, training reserves. And uh, I was there for three years. That's a normal tour, three years there. And I guess I was doing a good job of the old man uh, took a liking to me or something anyway. He wrote Headquarter Marine Corps requesting that I extend there another year. So I ended up f four years there at uh, uh, Fort Worth. That was that was good duty state. I was kind of far removed from the tough Marine Corps training reserves. Uh, then I got orders for uh, Okinawa. Okinawa, Japan. I was there for uh, six months, that's a normal 13-month tour. I was there for uh, six months, and the Army, the Navy, uh, everyone else, all of the wives, the dependents could all, you know, they had quarters for dependents in Okinawa. I said, man, I don't know why the Marines can't have their dependents here. But I was glad that my wife wasn't there, because overnight, you know, that's the way... The military works overnight. Uh, I was given a couple of three hours, well, maybe maybe a day, to pack up. You're going to Vietnam. So uh, we, uh, as I said, we were there. Six, again, I was uh, first sergeant of an artillery unit in Okinawa training. Uh, so we uh, went to, uh, to Vietnam and... Uh, I went to Quan Tri, that's right up on the DMZ, right where the uh, uh, bad guys were. And the two other guys, one of them went to Wei and one of them went to uh, Fubai, I believe. Uh, so I spent seven months there. That completed my 13 months, which would have been a normal tour. I got orders in. Uh, after that, my 13 months was completed, I got orders for Camp Pendleton, California told my wife, I said, well, uh, we're going to be on the West Coast. We're going to be settled for a while. So I uh, I always did, though. I, I'd get housing, and our furniture was stored. I'd get the furniture all moved in, get it all set up, and then come back to Jackson and got her and the kids, and we made an easy trip out to, to uh, the West Coast, to Camp Pendleton. Uh, and would you believe... <laughs> I was there nine months, 
and the whole division got orders for whew, back to Vietnam. And the wife, of course, uh, I didn't, I was concerned about her. The only time I was really too concerned about her because she had to drive all the way across the country with two youngsters. Uh, of course, I knew she was a good driver and she she's a smart girl or she wouldn't got hooked up with me. Uh, so uh, uh, she come back to Jackson and uh, our whole unit went to Vietnam. We were at uh, around July and we had uh, artillery. We had uh, A, B, I was first starting of uh, C company, C battery, that's the battery. We had all the artillery in a, in a huge circle, you know, a huge circle. One this way, one pointing this way, this way and back this way to, in case the VC happened to try to come in. They did, uh, uh, I was first starting at that particular time of a mortar battery. Uh, <clears throat> but we got them, we, ha we, didn't, we hadn't got set up real good. You know, we had Constantino wire, I don't know what, you, but it's barbed wire that's just like this, Constantino, all around the compound. But we weren't set in too well because we hadn't been there. Because the VC, the ones that we captured, said the things that they worried most about was artillery and the B-52s, which flew so high they, they never knew when that round was coming on. And we fired H&Is, that's harassment and interdictory, around the clock. And they never knew. Uh, we had... Uh, uh, Green Berets, you've heard of them, out way out in the boonies, over close to the Cambodian border, kind of mapping out a reason where they were and how they were going. And we had the, the uh, asthma. We knew exactly the paths and the roads and so forth. And we would fire around, maybe uh, uh, fire around out, way on out in the boonies. We didn't expect to kill anybody, but... That messed up their mind, kind of messed up their mind. And an hour later, we'd fire another round uh, just to keep their mind, mess up their mind. Uh, then uh, later on, way on down the line, when I was getting, of course, that was another, that was a 13-month tour there also. Uh, at this particular time, I was getting, uh, had a couple of months, and every time a new first sergeant would come in, they would take my place, and I'd kind of break him in, whatever was going on, and I'd go do something. I was the S-4 chief at that time, give me the job, getting all the ammo in and getting the uh, food in and everything else. And we were situated so that to get our, our ammo and our food in, <clears throat> helicopters would bring our food in. They'd get up, well, well on up, and they'd tilt that thing like this and shoot, just throw our, throw our ammo and our food and everything else out and we'd, we'd have to gather it up. Anyway, we were, uh, as I said, uh, that was about 10, 10 months or 9 months or something like that that we'd been, and we, we were well fixed in. We had triple stand, triple strands of Constantino wire all around that compound. You know, uh, one here, and where you are, another one, over there, another one. Uh, to watch those characters, because they were getting brave then, they were coming on down. And my my chief uh, in the S4 section, I'm glad he was on the, I'm glad he was on the post that he was on. They had earphones, just like you've got. They had wires running under all three strands of the Constantino wire. You could hear a bug crawling. I mean, you could hear anything. So he was, we had a sergeant of the guard, naturally. He would call the sergeant of the guard and say, Say, sergeant, it sounded like there's something in this wire. If not, it's a mighty big bug. And he kept getting louder and louder. He called back again, said, There's something in this wire, man. The old sergeant of the guard said, Well, you keep looking and listening. It's pitch black. You ain't going to see nothing. Uh, he said, he called a third time, he said, listen, there's something in this wire. And each each one of the sentries had these uh, hand flares, these pop hand flares that would, you'd fire one up and it would light up the air. He says, well, pop.
pop one of your hand flares. He popped one, and would you believe them rascals had already cut through, crawled through the first two triple stands of barbed wire, wire and getting ready to come into the third one. If they'd have got through that one, Watashi well, probably wouldn't have been here today because they probably, sitting outside, they had a whole infantry of troops ready to come in and wipe us out, which they, which they could have gone. We, we had very little security except our gun crews. Uh, uh, we had an infantry unit up above us, but uh, they wouldn't have done us any good at that particular time. Uh, and we got, uh, I don't know how many we killed, but uh, captured three or four. Uh, and just so happened there was a tank sitting in there. I don't know what he was doing in there. You know, a big tank. And up on that he had a ring mount and a 50 caliber machine gun. And he hopped up on that thing and after we lit the area up, he could see them running all directions. Next day we found quite a few of them uh, which had been killed. One of them's Head, that thing, his head was cut off. So that 50 caliber, I guess, machine gun had, had done a job on him. Uh, and that was there just a sh short time after that until my uh, 13 months was up. And I headed, I got orders for, where did I get orders for? Oh, back to old Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. And uh, I was there for just a, mm, just a short time, really. Uh, until uh, uh, I had enough time to, well, I was, I knew if I'd have stayed another, uh, maybe another year I'd have made a, another strike, but I didn't think it was worth it. So I was 45 at that time. I knew if, you know, if I got out and got a decent job at anything, I'd, I needed to go in, so I retired. And uh, of course, you got back to Jackson. Uh, I went to Owens Corning, had just come in. I went out to Owens Corning and got, first guy I interviewed me was a Marine captain. Uh, he said, hey man, if you got any more uh, retired people, uh, they was hiring people in. I said, I don't have any more. So he gave me a job as a quality auditor, which is a real soft job. And that, uh, uh, that was, uh, well, a latter part of 68. I retired in, uh, August 68 and this happened in the latter part of 68 and I worked there 15 years quality auditor and uh, took my walking papers again in 84 joined the VFW in 86 and we've done over uh, the commander said between I didn't keep up with them, between four and five hundred military funerals uh, so I kept busy there. And done a lot of honeydew jobs. Did a lot of those. Uh, we've lived a good life, good Christian people, go to church, uh, pray, and do all this other stuff. We're just sitting here waiting for the good Lord. I'm not ready to go, but I'm prepared to go. I'm prepared to go. <laughs>